Hello and welcome to another episode of Emacs from scratch and Emacs tutorial for beginners. I've decided to kind of rename this video series just because the, this new title reflects the content uh, like a bit more. Um, so far in the past episode, like we talked about uh, basics of ELISP uh, and LISP in general. So we're on good grounds to actually start with more practical um, kind of features of Emacs. And today we're going to talk about features and load paths. So basically like one of the most uh, fundamental concepts of uh, ELISP and Emacs. Um, so we always like in the previous episode, we actually just wrote the Emacs terms, Emacs uh, expressions, sorry, ELISP expressions inside Emacs and evaluate the expressions um, like on the fly as we uh, as we went through the material but obviously we want to make persistent changes like we want to persist our um, elisp code on the disk and store the store it in in the form of files so we can uh, load them later or just run them as we please um, just like uh, any other programming language we can actually open a file with the uh, dot el suffix and write our elisp code in it and store it on the disk but in order to um like execute the, uh, that el file or elisp file we have uh, like two there's like two common approaches that we can take the first one is the batch mode so the batch mode uh you you might not uh, even use it in your uh, uh daily life but uh, personally i use it quite a lot um the batch mode is a non-interactive way of running elisp code just like a bash script or a python script or whatever uh the way we can do it is just in in a terminal we can say emacs dash dash batch which just like tells emacs that i want to run emacs in non-interactive mode and don't uh, load any like init file for me we're going to talk about the startup process in the future and dash l that stands for load so and we pass like a pass to a file to uh, emacs to load when we execute it um let's have a um, like a let's give it a try let's create a file in the tmp and let's call it blah dot, uh, dot e right and i'm going to just Int hello world. Right, so a simple file, the suffix is .el, and I just have one expression that just says hello world, right? So if I switch back to my terminal, I always, uh, I'm already here, so I can say uh, Emacs, as you, I have it actually. Um, blah, but yeah, so as you can see, Emacs dash dash bash dash l and the pass to the file. When I hit enter, actually, just like bash or Python, you can see that just Emacs runs the runs that file for me, right? Whatever is in that file is going to be executed, and uh, it uses a CDI or standard output as uh, to kind of print the messages uh, instead of the message buffer. It's quite handy. Uh, in my like elisp is really uh, useful for certain uh, things like personally i use the batch mode to compile my website so my web my personal website uh, is written in elisp like i have I, I i've written on like a static generator a static html generator based on org mode uh, and i use the batch mode to kind of generate the html's and like push it to my uh, server uh, it's quite handy uh, as i mentioned but you might not need to use it in your uh, daily life but the thing that we use quite often is the load function which is the other common approach to actually load elise files into the current running emacs process so i'm on, uh, as you can see i already loaded on emacs like i'm using emacs right now and uh, load by itself is a function that you can uh, pass a uh, like pass just one argument there's just like one mandatory argument and few optional arguments and 
basically you can pass a file name or a file path for to load so it can loads it in the current running process um, i'm going to show you uh, how it works but uh, when you like in this example in the second example that we, i have capital path uh it load function the load function by itself first looks for pass plus uh the dot elc uh suffix elc is like uh, el files but like byte compiled uh, we're going to talk about it in the future when we talk about compilation but you can think of it as like byte code like uh, pi c files if you're used to python if it can find uh find that file basically your the given name plus dot elc it loads that file otherwise it looks for uh dot dot el file if it uh, can't find that for a specific uh, elis file it goes and tries platform dependent suffixes for example on GNU linux uh, you can actually create emacs modules as a shared library like dot so uh, suffix uh, it tries to find uh, such a like a shared library if it can it it will try to load it otherwise uh it goes and try path as you may like exactly as you uh, pass it to load and tries to load that file uh this is a sequence but the thing is it actually looks for the for the given file in in your load paths what is load pass so load paths uh by by itself is just a, a variable it's a list there's a list called load pass so if i switch back to my scratch buffer and say load paths and evaluate this uh, expression as you can see on the bottom left uh, actually let me do this right and switch to the message buffer as you can see the value of uh, that variable is a giant list of different directory paths that emacs want like is going to look into to find a file that you actually pass to load so going back to here but for uh, here when i say load instead of path let me say like path one let's say we have a file somewhere called path one when i say load path one it's going to actually look like iterate through that list of uh directory paths and um kind of look for a file called path one dot elc at first in those paths if it could like on the first pass if, if it, it couldn't find the elc one it's going to look for the el file otherwise for other platform dependent suffixes and at the end it's going to use just pass as we pass it to the load function itself in the first directory if it couldn't uh, find anything like that in the first directory in the first path it's going to actually uh, it's going to actually uh, move to the second pass in the load pass list and repeat the same process um that's how we can actually uh, that's how load works another uh, way to actually uh, by default we can actually add paths to the load path i'm going to show you uh, in, a, in a second in action but basically uh, we already talked about lists in previous episodes so add to list function uh, we say we want to add this path our load path after after we execute this expression after that the new path is on the head of our uh, uh, load path another way to do it is to use emacs load path environment variable whatever paths that we provide via this environment variable emacs is going to process it and use that uh, like use those paths to initialize the default value of the load pass uh, list here so uh, we talked about a lot of paths. Basically, let's see it in action. So if I go back to the scratch, we created a file. What was it? Uh, blah. Yeah, we created this file blah.el here, right? 
I can go to a scratch and just say um, load and the absolute pass to that file. Slash C, EMP, and blah. Right? So if I execute this uh, expression right now, uh, as you can see on the bottom corner, it returns T, which is like true, which indicates that we successfully load uh, blah that here. So if I go back to the message buffer, I should see. Um, yeah, where is it? Yeah, hello world. So we executed, uh, we evaluated that expression twice. So I see hello world twice here. Um, but as I mentioned, I can actually remove the dot el because the load function on its own is going to try different suffixes for uh for blah so if i execute it again if i evaluate it again i see a, another hello world here so by default as i mentioned load is going to try dot elc first and then dot el and since there's an uh dot el file in this directory in this patch I'm going to find it and load it and if i actually just say blah let's see what's going to happen if I execute this form, it says like, I get an error saying that cannot open load or cannot open load file, no such file or directory, blah, right? So it couldn't find uh, that file actually. So let's use add to list to add that path to our load path and try again. Here, okay. So if I evaluate this form, as you can see on the bottom corner, uh, the, just the absolute path that I uh, use uh, is on the head of load path. So if I say car um, load paths, actually, it returns the path that, that I just used, right? So when I say load blah, it's going to first look at the paths for a file, for that path that I mentioned for a file called blah.elc uh, and then for blah.el. Let's try it. Yep, it loads the file uh, successfully. Um, sorry, let's see it on the message buffer. Hello world. So it works. Um, it's quite simple, right? You give it a file name or a file path. It's try to find uh, Emacs tries to find it and load it. Otherwise, throw an error. There is like other uh, optional um, optional uh, parameters that you can pass to load, uh, but you can read uh, more about load. Uh, like you can read the Docker string and learn more from it. Uh, I leave it to you uh, to actually do that. Um. And to go back to our topic, so that's how uh, load works, and we looked at batch as well, and uh, we actually learned about load paths. Now, uh, Emacs has um, has a concept called feature. Basically, uh, Emacs tracks what library or file or package is loaded by feature uh, by a concept called feature. Basically, any file, any list file or package or library, they're all the same, right? Can provide zero or more feature. So uh, whenever a file actually provide a feature, that feature, uh, like e Emacs basically store that feature in a list called features. So we have a variable name called features that is a list to begin with and contains all the loaded features of the current running Emacs process. You can learn more about uh, features by doing Control H, V, and features. Read the Docker string. But to show you, how, like briefly, the value of it, if I type features and evaluate this form, since it's a variable, it returns the value of this variable. And if you look at the bottom corner, you see uh, that it contains a list of some symbols so each sim each feature by itself is just a symbol uh but emacs uses 
those symbols to indicate whether uh, a module that provides that feature is already loaded or not. There's a function, there's a predicate function called feature P. Uh, I think I talked about it before, but basically when you see a P at the end of a function name, uh, that's a convention in ELIS that indicates that this function is a predicate function. Basically, you can pass a symbol to it as a feature, and it tells you whether that feature is loaded or not by looking inside the features list here. So let's see it in action. Um, if I say, for example, feature P, um, blah, right? Like a random symbol. It returns nil. I evaluate the form and it returns nil, meaning that the feature blah is not loaded in the current Emacs. But let's say, for example, honey, I guess it should be loaded. Yes. So there's a feature called company provided by the company library. Uh, and it's loaded. Another alternative to the to this feature p function could be just look inside the feature list and see whether that uh, symbol exists or not. We can use like something like member function and say blah um, features, right? It returns nil, meaning that it doesn't contain any member blah. Or if we pass company. It returns a sub list starting from a company that indicates that company is already loaded. But obviously, everyone uses feature P. You should do it as well. But I just wanted to show you that it's literally a list that you can look into. So, we uh, if a if a feature is in the features list, it means that feature is loaded. But how do we actually uh, like? provide a feature so there's another function called provide uh, that gets uh, like you can learn more about these functions to uh, by looking at their docket string we are control h f and the function name but basically provide uh, takes just one argument which is a symbol name and add that symbol to the features list usually not usually almost 90 90 percent of times libraries and elis files or packages they add the like they use provide function to add a symbol to their features list so it kind of uh they announce to emacs that okay i added this feature to you go crazy uh i'm going to show uh sh like show some real examples uh in a bit but let's try it in our new uh the file that we created here that here so right now if i uh, load this file over and over again as, as i did uh, earlier it just uh, prints out hello world in the message buffer but um if i actually use provide here and say this file provides a feature called blah right if i do this and go back to the scratch right now if i say feature p blah we can say uh, we can see that it's not loaded but if i load the blah file again it, it just got loaded because i uh, got true back and i run the feature p again as you can see it returns true meaning that feature blah is in in the features list meaning that it's loaded let's look at the features on its own as uh, and as you can see on the uh, first uh, element of features we have blah the symbol blah <laughs> funny um so that's how provide works and we we go like emacs provided all those features and like functions just to come up with the like the main ingredients to uh, load uh, other elis files there's a function called require just like many languages have uh, require or import or include same functionality here basically how it works is that uh, you pass the symbol name the feature a symbol that you want to load um, Emacs look uh, first of all it looks whether it's already loaded or not if it's not loaded it's going to 
call the load function that we learned about it earlier and try to guess the name of the file based on the feature name we, we're going to have a look at it again um i, I guess it called some uh like a print name or something on the uh on the uh, feature itself where is it let me just write really quick print name or print name even yes so um so you can read more about require it takes like other uh parameters as well but so it looks for the feature here for example when you say require some feature it looks for a some feature in the features list to see whether it's loaded or not if it's not it's going to guess the name of the file using some feature and try to load it you can alternatively pass uh, like a file pass to require for it to say okay if you couldn't find this feature look into this file explicitly uh, if you don't do that uh, require try to look into the load paths and figure out what file contains this uh, feature basically for you and the way it does that is to turn that some feature into a, like a string and attach it to the load paths to, to each load paths and go through the uh, process of loading that file um, and that's how it basically tries to find it um let's give it a shot let's say i want to load a test test right uh when i evaluate this form as you can see it says cannot open load file no such for all directory exactly the same error message that we got from load when we tried to load a file that doesn't exist uh to show you uh, the message again right this is the error message uh, we got earlier um but we can actually provide a file pass as i mentioned here so it can explicitly look into that file but since we don't have a feature like this it's not going to uh load anything so let's go back um let's create another file call uh, so i mentioned that each uh list file or a module library whatever we call it and provide zero or more um, features i add another provide function provide call here so i can um, add this new feature to emacs so if i go back to a scratch and they require test test it's going to fail again right because it doesn't know how to load test test but if i give it a uh, explicit file name to look at right it's going to find blah because i know blah actually provides test test and it's going to load it as you can see it's uh it doesn't return uh, a nil or a, an error anymore and excuse me it just loads the that file um sorry message and as you can see here, hello words got printed on the message buffer. Um, one other thing is that now if we try test test feature with feature P to see whether it's loaded or not, it is loaded. So it's in our, our uh, features. Now I mentioned that if uh, require can't find the, the feature, it tries to guess the file name. Let's give it a shot. Let's create another um, another file here. Instead of blah, we go to we create a directory called test and then we call it blah.el. <clears throat> and we put just a simple message here. Hello from here. Right? And then yes, create the directory please. And we provide a symbol. Uh, um, Blah, slash. Oh no, test is slash blah. Right? Oh, why? Yeah. Okay. Now, we created a simple, we provide a symbol that contains a slash here. Um, if I go back to the scratch, we already added TMP to our, our load path. So basically, 
on the paper if i do this right if i try to look for a require a feature that calls test slash blah what happens is elisp is going to try to find a file called test slash blah dot elc and elc el and go through the load um, procedure and look for that file inside any load patch that we have and when we try to like when we turn this symbol to a string that a slash would be there right so it would be like adding this pass to to every load patch that we already have let's try it with this like this one let's concat uh, concat it and uh, concat them together and as you can see it forms a path right so if i do this elisp is going to find my uh find my new file inside the directory nested in the in one of the load paths that i got so that's a mechanic uh, mechanism that you can actually use to um, load files uh personally i use it a lot so if we have a look at some of the fg42 files for example cube um, let's go deep a little bit In, instead of cube we can go here and build and docs right so this is just like a huge elis file and if you look at the end this specific file provides a feature called fg42 slash build slash docs right so whenever i require this um this feature anywhere in elis it's going it, it's going to try to look for a file called docs.el in a directory called build which is in another directory called fg42 in every path in my uh load path um that's a way to do it I, i'm not sure whether or not other people uh do it this way because like fc42 is a bit complicated but for a, like a normal library if you you're trying to write a library you don't need to do this I stick with just uh like normal features you don't have to nest them in, into directories but for your own sake uh if you want to kind of make it nicer that's a way um so take take it with a grain of salt um so now we have a, like a understanding of how actually elisp loads different uh, elisp files into the current running process so technically we should be able to install any package any library from from the internet we'll we get it from github or uh whatever thank you um you should be able to actually install them the hard way by the hard way i mean we can actually did i write tds right ah whatever um uh yeah i forgot to be here so i got sidetracked um we can actually clone any library any package that we want from github or whatever other code hosting you i hope you use it something like beside github something free but we can just clone a repository put it somewhere in our disk i'll add the path to that directory to our load paths and just require or load the files that we need in in our emacs that's uh that's a bit hard to do it and uh, you know you don't want to do that for every library manually and that's why emacs comes with a package manager not just one there's like other alternatives that we're going to look at uh, uh we'll look at in the future episodes uh but basically what package manager uh what the package manager does is to kind of go through the same process and automate th this process for you we're going to have a look at the default package manager of emacs in the next episode and some alternatives probably in uh like follow-up episodes um that's it for today and uh thank you